Now I want to show you what's going on. We moved to the front after our practice. See him over here on the 15th course. And we are laying our brick in the front. And I'm going to show you what's going on over here. Over here, because they want the front door done first, we're going to start, we've got to start tooting it out. You see that? And uh, right here I got my story pole. We're on top of the 14th course. See the story pole goes all the way up and keep watching that. So, I'm going to show you as we go. So just to show you, I'm over here. I'm on my 18th course. I'm just going to cut this brick. I haven't used the saw yet. This brick is so easy to cut. I gotta do a little talking about that too. Right down even where I'm going. So, got my line there. When you're doing a lead like this, you put your level up. Make sure all these brick are right in line with the way you're going. I'm going to be tooting this out. So, I got to do put my cement in there like that. Like that. Get my brick. In there like that. I'm gonna level it. See that? I want to make sure she's going the right way. Just like that. Now just so you know, I'm gonna bring my story pole, which I touches the top of the roof. There's the top of my 15 course. So I know I'm going right. I don't have to use this all the time, just keep checking it every two or three. After a while, you get the feel for it. But now, now I want to toot this out right here. So, here's what I'm going to do. Take a break already? Yeah, I am. I'm going to get a brick like this. Put the styrofoam on. Or anything else you want. And put the brick on there like that to hold it. You gotta see where we are with level. And then, from this line, you gotta look way down, seeing if you're lined up. Let's take the camera and we'll look. See if you can see that. See how I'm lining that brick? See how it's out this way? In that way, you gotta line that brick right out. It's like uh, targeting, targeting a rifle. There, I know that brick is good now. And keep it even with the line and that's it now when I'm building a lead like this I like to get the line make sure everything is lined right up with that other corner I don't want anything bowing in here that's a big deal I'm just continuing on Okay. I just level it out. Level it this way, like that. Level it this way. I keep checking my heights as I go. Kind of make sure this line's loose going up with the line. Now I put that other brick here. I'm going to put another one going right across. See that? Like that. I'm going to take this brick. This one, that, uh, it's going to go on like that. Like that level. That way. Make it level that way. Tie it up. Good, we'll let that sit for a while and keep going. Let me say a little bit about the wall ties we're using. This is the system we're using. Screw it into the wall and then use your tap cons or whatever. I don't want to say too much about it because I'm going to tell you something right now. Whatever you do in the masonry business, they're going to change it and tell you 
some time that you can't do that. So I don't go with that. See it fits right down in there and hits. Now right in here, after we get in that hole, right there, you see the styrofoam? We just fill this little spot with styrofoam. So I just want to just touch on that. I want to say too much. I did a whole video on uh, wall ties. I'll show you what that is. Check it out. Now you're going to ask, what do I use for a line holder? Well, I get this block. Uh, they used to give them years ago. Tighten that up pretty good. Like that. And then come around and put it on that board. It gets me pretty close to where I want to be. And I get a twiggin. It's like a line holder. And if you see it right there, it says Ridgely Block Company. They've been out of business for 20 years. And then I'll show you. I'll come over here. Take that twiggin. Hook it on my block. I put it down. Then I follow my line. So we'll look at the other side too. So on the other side, I got this thing, which I just found in the shop. Wrap my line around that, put my twiggin on this end. Now I go between the line. And sometimes we're laying the brick. What happened was I put a half here and a half on the other side, so it looks good on the corners. So you have to make up for it. And my joints are too tight. So what do you do in a case like that? You nip a little bit off. Just like that. Now this brick is easy to cut. See? Put it in. normal joints. I want to make a point here. See all the water coming off of that brick? This brick is like glass. It's like a glass block. It's the middle of September. We're lucky we're in the sun. Basically can't lay this kind of brick in the winter. But I want to make a point. Everything depends on when you're laying a brick, what kind of brick it is, uh, what it was made for, where you're laying it, when you're laying it, Everything depends. Masonry work is not black and white. So people are going to ask me, Mike, how many rolls of brick can you go a day? Well, I've seen them do the whole side of a building in a day. Sometimes the brick is, is uh, the cement will dry quickly. It can go as high as you want. Sometimes it'll start squishing down. You just got to check your joints on the bottom. And if they're not sinking, you just keep going. That's, that's my answer. If you want, you could use a chisel. See how rusty that is? That's how much I use one. Sometimes, they don't always break, right? If you can get away of doing it this way, it's better. See, ready to go. Back in the 60s and 70s, there was no brick saws. Saws didn't really come out until about the 80s. Uh, you put a brick in here and you snap it. That's how we would do it. That was what one of our machines. Or as technology advanced, we'd get this one. It'd be called a snapper. Hydraulic. You snap it. it what, did it come out perfect? Not all the time. You still had to trim it with a hammer. Now, if you want, you could always use a wet saw or you could use a grinder to cut the brick, too. But in this case, they're easier to chip. And why make all the dust and everything if you don't have to? Now we're going to go back to the guys in Denmark. I want to just show you the way they cut the brick. Anybody says there's a right and wrong way to cut brick, well, I think it all depends on what brick you're using and what country and what area you're doing it in. So I just want to point this out, and I want to make a, a couple points. There's no right and wrong way, as long as it works. A lot of different ways to do brick cutting. 
So uh, I'll just show you this, we'll continue See on. The butter and the brick right there. We're gonna put it right here in the, where that tooth is. We're lucky today to have an experienced mason with us. Union, Philadelphia, he's gonna show us the proper way to do it. That's it. That's how you put the brick in and you put your tooth. And then we get our little tool. Tool it in. We tool it in there. Beautiful. We're gonna have an experienced mason. 16 years went to school for this. And he's gonna show you how you put the mud down in California because that's an earthquake region. So go ahead, Joe, just put it down. And what do you, how do you call this? How pick and dip. Pick and dip, you call this. So, let's see how he puts the mud down. And then you just leave it that way, huh? You can't blur it out, right? No furrowing. So see, I'm just telling you, everybody's gonna tell you to do it different. Now in the real world, the real world of uh, pointing up or striking up, it depends on what you call it. I got one of these. I'm working with uh, a modern Union Mason. I'm gonna show you him doing it too. It's good when you work with different guys. See the way they do it. Take a little bit off of there. Goes in, it looks like a little, need a little more in there, just put it in. Every mason's gonna do it a little different. And the thing is, how long do you wait before you strike up? Well, up here we, still a little wet, but usually before you go home. Whether it's wet or if it isn't wet, whatever you gotta do. And then when you clean it, modern days you use acid. I'll probably be showing that at the end of the video how we use that. So that's it. That's how we strike up. We'll see how the, our other guest masons doing it. Now we're working with uh, a mason. He works all kind of buildings from Philadelphia to New York to everything. Joe, let's look at that uh, that striker you got right there. You see that striker? What do you call that? A barrel. It's a barrel striker. joiner. Barrel joiner. And what's your strategy when you're bat, uh, doing these joints? We're going to do the heads first. Right. And then do the beds. Okay. And you have to make sure you miter into your old joints. Right. Okay, do it up here. Up in here, I show them. So you do uh, your head joints first, going up and down, right? And then how long do you wait before uh, you go over it again? You just brush it lightly? We should, depending on the absorption of the brick yeah will be determined when you're going to hit it again okay and these are a hard brick that don't absorb moisture so therefore we'll probably wait so we don't smear them up too bad it'll just yeah. make the washing down process a little bit harder all right that's a horse hair brush so now we're going to polish the bottom and it's pretty hard on the bottom already the top is wet as hell Now what do you do? You cool it? Yep, we're gonna re-strike everything. And you re-strike everything. The beds and then miter in to the beds, the heads. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's done. Now this is uh this is yesterday. Old school way of doing this was we just get a regular scrub brush, wet it down the next day, scrub it. All that film will come off as long as it's the next day. That was the old school way we always did it. Now I'm more to more or less to use acid. Now we're still washing and we're back the next day. And in the real world of masonry, it decided to rain on us. So we got in a big hurry, we we uh, struck it all up and then uh, we had to brush it. Then we cover it with plastic. So I'm back the next day and it's a mess. So, you gotta wet it down, 
and use a steel brush. That usually takes a lot of the big stuff off. Sometimes the bigger stuff you got to get a brick to rub it. Depends on what kind of brick you're doing. Go over your joints a little bit and then use your steel brush. Anytime you're cleaning bricks though you got to do it the next day. If you don't do it the next day it's going to get hard as a rock and you won't be able to get it off at all. So this is our policy. This is our policy always to uh, clean it the next day with the hose. And then at the very end we're going to show you how we acid it. Because uh, you do joints in a real wet day and they're going to come out a lot brighter than if you do it on a real hot dry day. So everything matters at brickwork. So I'll pass that along. Now this is the brick we're using. I'm going to make another point here. And uh, the brick salesman came and says, you don't have to worry. This is pre-blended, immediate use brick. And it really does look that way. What I learned is when you go to a brick job, or when you do a brick job, you start taking a little bit off every pile. Because if you don't do that, you might end up with one pile, one load of brick. It might be a whole different color then the building will going to have a big blotch on it. So uh, I've been having a gentleman's disagreement about this. He wants to bring one pallet at a time. I said, you can't do that. So he said the brick salesman's going to come and he's going to explain it to me. But I know I'm very leery. I said, you can't do that. So remember that. You can't take it off of one pile. But here comes the brick salesman. We'll see what he says. Okay, boys, what can I do you out of today? <laughs> so that is pretty much the end of part two. A uh, long way to go yet. I want to make a couple points. When I uh, get the brick there, I make sure I get all the brick there. Because sometimes they'll say, oh, I'll have the brick. It won't come on time. They still didn't make it. It'll be a different color. Get all the brick there. Then I, I make sure that I use all the brick a little piece at a time. I've seen it a few times where they sent uh, one brick might have been made at a different time, one cube. It's a shade different. They put it on the building. There's the shade showing. So you got to keep mixing them up. Uh, I'm colorblind. I always keep asking everybody, is this matching? Is this matching? I don't want to get into that. Uh, how high can you go? I always cover my brick. Some brick, as soon as you put it down, the cement hardens right away because it sucks the water up and you can actually join it as you're going. So that's the kind of brick where you can go high, real high all day. Some brick like we're laying is like glass and it just wants to keep sinking. One time we did this chimney and it was supposed to be done mid-October and they didn't get the roof on and the shingles on and everything ready until uh, the middle of December. Everything was frozen. They needed heat. They had to have the chimney built. So as I was going up, the bottom was squishing down. I don't like to do winter work. I don't like antifreeze. I don't want to be building fires, heating the water, heating the sand. It's just not worth it. So that's it of part two. Still have a long way to go. Appreciate the comments. Uh, one of the reasons I won with mixing it up with the brick salesman on his mic is he's running for office again, and I, I'm going to help him out and put the sign in front of my house. Fourth turn term councilman he has stolen less so vote for him on November 8th so uh, that's the end of the video we're going to continue now with part three